would have heard the saying, if I can see further, it is because I stand on the shoulders of giants. And one such giant of the Indian tech startup ecosystem is Vishal Gondal. Don't miss the first part of his conversation, which covers Vishal's journey from the late 90s to 2012, when he sold his startup to Disney for almost $100 million. In this part, Vishal talks about his journey into fitness and the birth of his startup, GoKey, that is on a mission to make people fitter by using smart technology. Goki is a leader in the health tech space, having raised more than $100 million till date from top VCs and impacting millions of lives. Vishal leverages understanding of gaming to make gamification as the heart of Goki. And in this episode, he tells Akshay Dat about the journey of building Goki as a second time founder. Stay tuned and subscribe to the Founder Thesis podcast on any audio streaming platform to learn how second time founders go about building their next big thing. And Goki's story again goes back to the same story. So when I was in college, I was national level volleyball player. But running India games, I used to weigh 120 kgs. I was extremely obese, unhealthy. I had all kinds of health issues. And I was like, how do I become healthy? And 2011 is when I started my health journey. Of course, I went to the gym and diet, why it could chill. And what worked for me was when I started working with a coach who used to message me and tell me, do this, do that. And being a techie, I had all kinds of, I had the Fitbit, I had all kinds of measuring devices, everything. And I used to send that data to my coach and my coach used to train me. And what I realized is that, so I ended up, by the way, running 14, 15 half marathons. I have done ultra marathons. I have even trekked to Everest base camp. So what I realized is that the biggest problem of health or fitness is not data or information. People think that it's a data or it's a problem of information. Like they say, I will connect you to the best doctor or I will give you the data on what is your... The problem is people already know. People know they should not be smoking. It's a damn written on the pack, but people still smoke. So the problem with health is that people lack the motivation. It's more a motivation issue, especially now. And after COVID, so you can't say you don't know. Like... The whole world now knows that immunity is the battle to anything. You can't be, and people have seen people dying because of that. So the idea for me was that I thought that, hey, the healthcare system is broken, not because it's not healthcare, it's sick care. It's boring. The apps are boring. Nobody wants to be called a patient. You are a patient when you are sick. But if somebody keeps calling you a patient, you don't want to engage with that app. But there were no apps at that time, 2012. Indian healthcare apps were non-existent. Yeah, I mean, Practo was there. Practo again was there. And so Practo's business was being connected to a doctor. So there were a few platforms like this. So my idea was that it is not about data. It's about the motivation and which is why Goki launched the wearable with a coach. So 2014, if you Google, we are the first wearable company ever in the world who said wearable is not our business. We are in the business of providing you a service, which is a health coach. And and that was the turning point. And today, of course, we have pivoted into coaching. We have insurance. We have health e-commerce, etc. But the insight was that we want to make people healthy, not by providing them medicine, but by providing them motivation. And motivation comes from a coach, from a community, from rewards, from data. So we created this whole ecosystem approach. Of course, people... First said we are stupid, nobody is ever going to pay for services, etc. etc. But again, the subscription as a concept was like non-existent in India at the time at least. So we were like talking of so many different things, whether it was Kavaltam, related to health, related to devices, I mean, various other things. It it really became important for us to to make sure that that health becomes on the forefront. And with Goki. What we really did was we made sure that the whole aspect of data, which is your wearable or whatever else, connects with your coach, connects with your doctor. But one very unique part is that in Goki, we don't refer to our customers as patients. We call them players because what we are saying is that they're all playing a game of life. They're all becoming healthier and we are here to support their journey to good health. And in the Goki system, our focus is around longevity. So what we are saying is it's a game of life where the way you become healthy is by improving yourself and that improvement leads to you living a longer and healthier life. 
So longevity became our core proposition. You must have gone through iterations to reach product market fit when you felt that, yes, okay, this is the right way to do it. Tell me about that. So one of the best things about Goki was that on day zero, we had a consumer insights team. I think the whole idea was that you release product, get feedback, then you iterate, release second product, get feedback. So I was a big believer in that whole philosophy of figuring out what is working, what is not working and directly talking to the customer. Was this something you first implemented at India Games and therefore you understood this is needed? See, because what happens in the gaming business, unless your gamers love your game, they're not going to play it. But what happens in a business of health or you do people mistake who their customer is. They think the doctor is my customer or the hospital is my customer. So they think, oh, the hospital told me or doctor told me I need these 20 features. I've added these 20 features. Now, why are the patients not using is they don't know. But we were directly going. So in fact, we were running Goki as a gaming company itself. So we call our users players. Our community is in, we have something called Arena. We have Goki Cash. So there are point systems. So the whole system has been designed exactly in that manner where it works and functions just like a game and we measure success like a game and in the Goki ecosystem we have done several other things which kind of makes it very interesting from the rewards perspective or from what we are doing so we have something called karma points so all the all your good health converts into these points which you can donate to charity so there is an entire aspect of charity and karma around it so there has been a lot of effort and thought gone into constructing this entire health ecosystem. And COVID actually became the inflection point for us because what we were saying is remote management, advice, immunity. But COVID made this became the mantra for the world. Everybody wanted to sit at home and not go outside. Everybody wanted to measure. They all had pulse oximeter or some of the other device to, to measure or check any of those things. So net net what happened is that because of because of these various especially in covid what happened is there was a massive change in consumer behavior and we benefited from this we saw our highest growth in that time but one also very important thing happened who's our biggest partner now our biggest partners are insurance companies because what happened is once you become healthy, we were able to tell the insurance company that, hey, Akshay is a healthier person, so please give him a better deal. He should get a lower premium or a better sum assured compared to somebody who is not as healthy. So I think the problem of health was unlike, see, credit, maybe, you know, what's your credit score, what my credit score, what's your worth based on that bank can give you loan, not give you loan. But yeah, you have a lot of data available for credit Exactly. So we started using the behavior data, of course, with the permission of our customers to give them insurance linked rewards. And today we have signed up large insurance partners like Kotak. We work with Bajaj. We work with multiple other partners to introduce this whole aspect of, of health and preventative healthcare is now the biggest theme when it comes to healthcare. Could you like just take me through that journey of building Goki because you were Previously running a business in which you were, your sales was to businesses, like those operators were the ones you needed to really sell to. Now you are in a, like a D2C business where you're directly selling to consumers. You have to figure out how to make them, like all those issues about churn and how to make them continue new. How did you figure out your go-to market strategy? What was, how did you figure out pricing? That journey of bidding Goki till you hit COVID, if you could just take me through that. So again, for Goki, the best part was, like I said, that we consider ourselves a game. So for us, the most important thing was, what is it which our players are going to enjoy doing? What is it that they're going to love doing? And we measure that by their engagement on our app. So we think of engagement as a proxy to your health outcome. So the more engaged you are, the more healthy you will become. So for us, it was all about uh, launch was with an app and a wearable fitness tracker, which would give data. And in the back end, you had coaches who would read the data and send messages. That was launch product. That's correct. That's correct. But then we soon realized that apart from this, people were saying, okay, coach, what, you know, which oil to, should I use? Or which apple cider, our coach said have apple cider vinegar. And when you go to Amazon and you type apple cider vinegar, you get 500 responses. 
and costing from 500 to 5000 rupees then our coach used to say okay have vitamin c vitamin d so what happened is our customers started saying listen tell me where to buy it from so we started sending them amazon links and flipkart links then we realized that listen we are sending so many links why don't we set up our own e-commerce store so goki actually set up something called goki store so within the goki app health store so it's again a marketplace, but it only is the products we and our coaches advise to you. So the conversion is crazy because you come and ask your coach, hey, coach tells you that hey, you need to have apple cider and you say you buy it from the Goki store. And it's cheap, it's credible because the problem of normal e-commerce is you don't know which product to buy. So we verified so that was a product created from that same insight. Then the whole aspect of insurance came in where people started asking us what insurance to buy. Because we are the health, that's when we started working on the insurance integration very clearly. Then we created a community because people wanted to interact with other people in their city. So somebody was saying, hey, sir, do you know any people, any other people in, the, in this city so that I can meet them? So we started creating groups. So what we started doing is we started listening to our customers and then tweaking and building and let me say evolving the product. So today, if you look at the Goki ecosystem, it has evolved massively from where it started. It first was just a coach and a wearable. Today, you can use any wearable. It's not just us. You can connect any device, including Fitbit, Apple, etc. We have coaches, we have doctors, and we have health experts. There is health content. There is health commerce. There is the entire health community system, which you can, it's almost like a social network. We then have our health-based programming and then we integrate with disease systems. So we work with pharma companies for fatty liver disease, cholesterol, asthma, COPD, heart disease. So depend diabetes, depending on what your health issue is, you can connect another device into our system and start monitoring and tracking that. So it became an entire health ecosystem with integration into insurance. And what we have just recently announced, that is the next stage of Goki, which is making it into a complete video game. So we announced a partnership and an investment from Animoca Brands. Animoca is the biggest player in the metaverse and Web3 space. And uh, along with Animoca, we are building the health metaverse, where what we are doing is we are basically giving you a virtual age, just like I told you, longevity. And as you become healthier, we are creating your avatar in the metaverse, your 3D avatar. And that avatar will get younger age as you become healthier. So think of it like a virtual Tamagotchi of yourself. Tamagotchi is this whole virtual pet. You add this fish in the tank, you give the fish food, clean the tank, go and look at the fish every day. And if you don't do it for five days, the fish can die. So it was that whole concept of taking care of a virtual pet. Now we are saying that we are creating this game where you are the virtual pet and your virtual character inside the game's health depends on what you do outside. So we are actually going to be doing a pilot of this in Dubai. UAE is going to be a big market for us, hopefully. We are now launching Goki. By the way, in the UK, we have done a joint venture there. We are looking at other markets. So I think now the next evolution of Goki is that taking this as a platform globally. And we partner with various people. So Goki is not direct to consumer purely. That's a small segment for us. Our bigger segment is we partner with insurance companies, health ecosystem. We partner with pharma companies. We partner with banks. Banks distribute Goki to their customers. So we And then companies can get it for their employees. So it, it's a much wider play of getting people onto the system. We then give you a ranking within Goki. So we call it SAFE. So just like an airline tells you you are platinum member or gold member and you can access the lounge and you can get a free upgrade. Similarly, in Goki, we have created a framework called SAFE. SAFE stands for sedentary to active to fit and to elite. So once you come on the app, you're a player. And as a player, you are sedentary. But as you improve, your data comes in, we underwrite you and we say now you have become active. And then from active, we make you fit. And from fit, you become elite. And now the best part, with our partnership with Kotak Insurance, you automatically get an insurance cover. When you are sedentary, they give you a 1 lakh health cover. Active, they bump the cover to 2 lakhs. Fit, they bump it to 3 lakhs. And elite, they bump it to 5 lakhs. So basically, you are able to, in this game of life, improve your coverage by just becoming healthier and more active. So we've already implemented these things on the system. 
help me understand how the revenue of this works then. Because I assumed that you would be like selling directly to consumers and earning subscription when consumers subscribe for it. But what you've told me is that's a very small part of the business. So just help me understand the, the various sources of revenue and what is their relative contribution to your total revenue. So the way to think about Goki is that we are a core preventive healthcare service. Our core customer segment is not actually 20-year-olds. Our customer segment is slightly older. They are 30, 35 plus because that's when you start taking health very seriously. And that's when you have onset of diabetes, hypertension. That is really the onset of a lot of these diseases. So for us, the distribution channel is multiple. So one is, of course, online and you can go to our website and buy. But the second channel is your insurance company will say, hey, here is our insurance plan and here is Goki. So at the time of the insurance plan itself, they distribute us and of course they bundle us or either they sell us separately and they become a channel partner for that is insurance companies. Similarly, they are not giving it for free. The insurance companies are charging customers which they pay you. Got it. Okay. Similarly, banks. So we work with Bank of Baroda, Axis Bank and other banks are on the way where bank is saying to their customer, we created a special offering for Bank of Baroda. We embedded the rupee chip in our device. So you can now use the device for contactless payments. So there what we are doing is we are now having the bank distribute it to their customers saying here is a new offer from Bank of Baroda and Goki which offers you health, coaching, preventive healthcare plus payment solution connected to your bank account. So they are now, so there is a small amount of, let me use the word, we do some value addition for each channel. Insurance ke liye value addition is premium connectivity. With the banks, the value addition is payments. With pharmaceutical companies. Uh, for a bank, this would be like the way a bank sells credit cards to their customer base to increase the revenues earned. They would also sell a Goki smartwatch. And that smartwatch, the bank will charge something to the customer annually or something like that. Like there would be an annual subscription which they would share with you. That's correct. That's correct. Similarly, we work with pharma companies who are, let's say somebody has a therapy area of diabetes or asthma. So normally the doctor will say, here is your medicine. Now the doctor will say, here is your medicine. And by the way, to improve the effectiveness, you can sign into this program, which will help you with adherence and so on and so forth. So the pharma companies are also upselling us as a digital service. So the idea is my target customer is somebody who is this age and who is having a health underlying health issue. Where are these people? They are either in going to a pharma company to buy medicine or they are insurance or companies are coming and saying, make my employees healthy, give them an insurance plan. So we are now working with a lot of enterprises who are giving it to us. So it's a multi, it's a multi-tiered distribution model versus just one trick of doing direct to consumer, which can be very expensive customer acquisition cost. I think for us, it is really about maintaining a decent customer acquisition cost. What do you earn from a direct customer over a year? Again, depending. So our plans can range from two to around 5,000, but our average will be more like three and a half thousand. But this would be much lower when it goes through a bank or an insurance company, right? ASP is higher because in the case of bank, we also or insurance companies, there is insurance angle in it. So because there's an insurance premium also added to it. So the average ticket size of a bank or an insurance company is higher. Actually. And this is life insurance or health insurance? What kind of insurance? Health, health, health. health. So health insurance premium annually would be like maybe 30,000 or something like that. Depends on which plan you are getting. I'm guessing an insurance company won't give you more than 10% of that. because no, no. So what the insurance company does is they actually price us in their premium itself. It is priced into the product. Well, recently, for example, we have launched a product with Bajaj called Respect. It is a product for, it's a rider for senior citizens. So if anybody has parents about the age of 55, 60, they can get this insurance rider where we are giving them the entire services of emergency. There's a variable which can track ECG. It has fault detection. There is doctor. So there's an entire thing only designed for senior citizens. And for this rider, you pay a small premium additional to the insurance plan itself. And for a corporate subscriber, this is something which is bundled with the insurance or there's also like a standalone, like a company who wants their employees to be healthy. Here. So there are both. I just tweeted yesterday, we are working with Zero Da. Zero Da is, is very focused and you know, both Nikhil and Nitin have announced a reward. If your employees are able to maintain a particular health score, they get a one year, one month extra salary. 
So we are the platform which is doing that for their entire team and there's a dashboard. So companies can use Goki for the well-being of their entire employee. There is data and then the data can be used to get better insurance because if you have an employee base which is having a good score, Today, what is happening is insurance companies have no idea. They are just giving you a price, assuming you and I are the same risk. They are saying, we don't know, so both are highest risk. So the premium is the highest. What we are telling is, no, this person is higher, this is X, this is Y. So there could be a differentiation and our data is now started accepting as a norm in the insurance industry. Which is the most important source of revenue for you from this? Is insurance the highest contributor within India? I would say banking and insurance are definitely very big for us. And the second will be the digital, the whole health ecosystem with pharma companies, hospitals and so on. In this space of insurance, there are a lot of startups like 2020 saw the birth of the Loop Health. And you have, I don't even remember all the names now. But these are all like startups focused on employee health insurance for corporates, chasing corporates. Plum is another one. Where do you see yourself with respect to these startups? See, these startups which you are talking about are just distributors of insurance. They are not, they are basically like a broker or there were these insurance, they are like new age insurance brokers. We are not insurance brokers. What we are actually doing is healthcare management. And then as an outcome of healthcare management, we are able to give you a better outcome and the outcome gets you a better insurance. We have what is called outcome-based insurance where the price, I'm not able to give you a lower price because I am discounting or I'm giving you from my own pocket some discount. Most of these other companies can only either give you a lower price if the insurance companies give them lower price or they are funding it themselves. But when I say I'm giving you a lower price is because I have been able to get an outcome which is connected to. So it's an outcome based insurance. That is what we are talking about. The other big line of business is also what we would call as digital therapeutics. That's like the industry jargon for it. Just help me. Pill plus service. We call it the pill plus service model where normally you're just getting a pill, but a pill or a, a traditional medical treatment combined with a good health plan can get you better outcomes. So if you're diabetic, if you're having hypertension, just eating the medicine is not going to solve anything. Because unless you change your diet or fix your, what is the root cause of this problem? These, especially uh, all the metabolic syndromes won't go. So we are specializing in that. So we work with our pharma partners and they then distribute us to the patients through their network. How pharma distribution happens, like they have these MRs who go to doctors. So these MRs would go to doctors and say that when you get a diabetic patient, not only subscribe a medicine to them, but also you can sell this Goki subscription. Or they will bundle it. They will say, for example, we created a program called Gut Fit with Abbott for fatty liver disease. So when doctor said, great, you have fatty liver, get Gut Fit me, medicine and us was combined. There's a program for diabetes. We have created a program. So there is a specialized program created, which kind of combines therapy with the pill and us. And then the doctor can recommend this program to the patient. In this, do the doctors also earn something by selling this? So that's again between the doctor and the pharma company. So we are not the people who get into the last mile. So what our strategy is that we have created the platform and we work with different go-to-market partners who then do the selling. So it's a classic B2B2C model. Okay. okay. Which is again similar to India Games. That was also like a B2B2. C. To be to see where mobile operators were the intermediaries in this case. But finally, the money was paid by the customer. The person had to download a game and pay the revenue and then revenue share could happen. Tell me how it works at the back end. Like this advice which they get or these messages, how much of it is manual? How much of it happens through AI? What all interesting things are you doing on the tech part of it to using AI and things like that because there's so much data so I assume a lot of scope for machine learning. So actually actually, more than AI what we have done is we have first of all aligned the incentives. See what happens in a lot of systems is and that's again classic gaming that if you are all trying to chase the same goal your chances of achieving that is higher. A lot of platforms use coaches just to sell. For them, a coach is actually trying to sell you another plan or another upgrade or something. Because they think that coaching ka, coach ka kaam hai, aapko naya plan bech. We, by the way, for example, one of, one of the very important point, we don't have a single free plan on our system. You only can come as a paid user. Because we saw 
very early that free users have zero engagement or very negligible engagement because so you don't have like a freemium strategy like one month free and then you pay okay nothing because health and education are two use cases where if you are serious you will pay and you will study if you are not serious you will just go away yeah, that one month free won't do anything because they, they, just think about it there are a million free courses online but why are people not doing it it's all there because a way by by paying you are saying that i am serious about this so we focused on that so first of all our users are paid users they all come by paying money and saying i have a health goal what we have done is we have created a framework on how we can make you meet that goal then the coaches are incentivized based on your progress towards that goal and we have mapped all of that to our safe metrics so if i am a coach and by the way, i have ai i have everything right but the final thing for a coach is just in the real world i am a coach and i have n players and all 10 are playing for ipl they're all elite that i am a great coach i should be making the highest amount of money because i am able to produce elite then i have a coach where you know out of the 10 9 are sedentary nothing should i be as a coach make more money no so what we have done is the coach makes a base amount but the incentivization is all connected to how people progress in their journey so coaches can make 10000 per month they can make 50000 per month using the same amount of players it all depends on what is the status of your players and that is exactly what happens in the real world if you are the coach of sachin tendulkar you better be making more money than a coach of somebody like me who doesn't even play cricket or plays once a month so we, we basically align the incentivization similarly all our product teams are aligned that the goal is reduce the number of people from sedentary bring them to other brackets so what we have done is so again like the keystone metric as we say so our keystone metric is common for pretty much all the teams and that metric is also common for our consumer so even our user wants to go to becoming an elite they are also chasing the same goal how do you source coaches do you pick up fresh graduates and train them or what is the way in which you build your coaching infrastructure it is a learning so the learning we got was garbage in garbage out we now focus a lot on the selection process coaches go through multiple rounds of interviews certification coaching training so our average recruitment time is almost 2 months but then the coaches are on the system for 3 3 years what we saw was that if you get people fast they churn out equally fast right now i would say that we have one of the most rigorous systems for getting people in because we have experimented with various systems so we look at minimum masters or bachelor's degree in nutrition or whatever but then they have to go through our own certification process and all these and 95% of these coaches are stay at home moms they're all working from wherever they are the global expansion will be powered by the same team from india that would give you the cost arbitrage of paying in rupees or paying in dollars no so platform will be same but it may require for example we may require doctors in the uk or some layers will be hybrid of course the pricing will also be different so there is a platform layer and then there's a service layer platform is going to be from india but service layers depending on the market will require local delivery or it will require global delivery that depends on the service like are you at liberty to share what kind of revenues you do what's your arr or so let's put it that way that we were on track to get to 100 million in in run rate in the next 24 to 36 months but given that now we have started focusing on ebitda so i think the big focus and i know everybody has been talking about is that whether you want to grow or have a profitable so in that trade off we are actually hoping to be break even in the next couple of quarters so i think what we have decided was rather than going for aggressive growth let us go on let's say that let's be healthier rather than just bulk up with steroids so while it is good so i think maybe it might slightly delay our part 200 million maybe instead of 36 months it might be a little longer but i think the goal is that we will get there pretty soon and i think the next few quarters are going to be about profitability is the way to profitability by cutting costs or by like what is the way to do that so i think the good thing about us is you you heard it before we don't have a free model so every person is paying so i think the difference for us was which channels we were focusing on a lot more so channels like b2c 
the good thing about those channels is they get you growth, but they are far more expensive. You have to put pay money to Amazon, you have to advertise on Google, etc. So those channels are faster growth, but higher CAC versus our other channels where the growth is a slight slower because you have to work with other companies. But each partnership, it takes a couple of months for it to really start showing numbers because the people they have to get trained and so on. So the problem or the opportunity in or the trade-off in these two models is that one model is I have a lot more control on the growth and the flow, but that comes at a cost of higher CAC. The other one is where I have and I think the answer is that there is a blend. The answer, I'm not saying there is one or the other. I would say that ultimately you need to blend both. And I think eventually we will end up in that blend. But this year for us, I would say that the B2B2C will be much larger than the B2C. And during COVID, it was the opposite because COVID made most B2C, B2B businesses were shut or they were not doing all of this. Banks and all that. And for example, pharma companies were only focused on COVID. There was nothing else happening. Insurances were all dealing with COVID-related claims. So during those times, COVID, we definitely saw a much faster growth in B2C. It is just because B2B, the B2B businesses were not as much active. What kind of metrics do you track retention-wise or what? as a founder, what are the metrics of the business that you track personally? So I would say the most important metric for us is our, what is the percentage of users who are from sedentary to active to fit to elite. I think that that kind of is the ultimate thing. If I'm able to get people out of sedentary, that itself is, that is an important metric for us. That is proof of it. That, and that, then we are tracking what is our average revenue per user. And now, of course, we are looking at what is our LTV and those kind of things. That becomes a very important metric. What is your uh, ARPU? Oh, our ARPU is now closer to uh, three and a half, four thousand. So yeah, that's about fifty dollars. But we are hoping that it will become actually higher now, given that insurance is going to be a key part of what we do. Insurance ARPUs are higher than fifty dollars. Okay. Plus, global expansion would also give you better. Yeah, yeah. And tell me about the fundraise journey. Like you had a fairly exciting journey for India Games. Was it as exciting for Goki? Or? The fundraising never stops. I think as an entrepreneur that you are always, you are always selling to someone. Either you are selling to an investor, you are selling to a customer, you are selling to a potential employee who has to join you. And the best part is I jokingly say that my pitch to all of them is the same. Whether I'm talking to an employee, it's the same pitch I'm making to an investor, the same pitch I'm making to a customer. So that is the be best part, the consistency of message. And that is what gets you the right kind of investors. I think my preference has always been to get strategic and smart money than dumb money. So for example, when we got Mitsui, who's one of our investors, Mitsui's healthcare division is most active. They have investments in big hospital groups in Asia as well as India. So Mitsui has been not just capital, but smart capital. They helped us in a number of expansion. Or our other investor, which is Animoca Brands, which again is very big in Web3. So while we did have NEA and other people also come in, it's always better to find an investor who can bring money and a little bit extra on the table. And that has always been my lookout. So my last question to you, what advice would you like to share with aspiring founders? So I think the, the biggest advice I want to give founders is that whatever you read on social media, etc., it gives you a very rosy picture of entrepreneurship. And you think, yeah, we are all... Entrepreneurship is like getting hit by lightning every day. But it is just another day in your life. It is not an event. You got hit by lightning today. It is not an event at all. It is just another day in your life. So the problem is that for being an entrepreneur, you fail every day and you may just be successful one day or you may not be even successful. But you need to keep the enthusiasm and keep the faith for that one day which you never know when will it come or which will ever come. So I, I think it is a journey which is which is a roller coaster going up and down constantly. The other thing is that don't find a structure. A lot of people are looking at these Twitter threads that 20 ways to do this and 10 ways to wake up at 4 in the morning. And so people are like, oh, this guy wakes up at 4 in the morning, does meditation. Then he says, I will also start doing it and suddenly I'll be successful. There is nothing of that sort. I think the point is that Creations happens in chaos. So you need to have chaos and that's when creation happens. And the most unexpected things happen 
when you do unexpected things. And that brings us to the end of this conversation. I want to ask you for a favor now. Did you like listening to this show? I'd love to hear your feedback about it. Do you have your own startup ideas? I'd love to hear them. Do you have questions for any of the guests that you heard about in this show? I'd love to get your questions and pass them on to the guests. Write to me at ad at thepodium.in. That's ad at t-h-e-p-o-d-i-u-m dot in.